everyone, this is Ross Raddy, and welcome to another episode of Fruit Talk. This is the podcast-style video that I do for you guys every Wednesday night at 9 o'clock Eastern. We talk all about fruits and all about vegetables, um, how to grow it, how to use that stuff in the kitchen, and more importantly, I think the more exotic things, things you didn't really know about that maybe you didn't even think existed. Um, in today's video, I want to talk to you guys about my favorite fruits to grow in a temperate climate. And some of these you may have to zone push a little bit. You may have to uh, extend the boundaries just a tad, but that's kind of what we talk about here on Fruit Talk. So if you're in the United States, you can grow just about every single fruit that I'm, I'm mentioning here in this episode of Fruit Talk. So stay tuned with me. Um, what I want to start out with by saying is that I've tasted a pretty good amount of different fruits now in this climate. Um, it took me a while to get a few things to get established, but it finally happened and this year I think I have a really good handle on what's what and I've read through many different things, all the all the crap, all the good stuff, um, and have finally just tasted it myself to realize what the truth is, at least by my own palate. And in this video, I not only want to tell you guys what tastes the best, but I also want to tell you what I'm going to be planting more of in the future. Um, so let's start out with uh, my spreadsheet here. My spreadsheet is its something I put a lot of time into for not only you guys, but for myself to really keep track of different things. And you can always find this, this link to the spreadsheet. I mean, obviously, I think you should bookmark it. You can add it to your Google Drive as well. But if you don't know where it's at, just go to any of my YouTube videos. It's in the description of every single video that I've ever put out. Um, and you can find all this valuable information here. Um, now this section here is labeled my other fruit trees because this is the section of the spreadsheet that I like to keep track of all the other fruits that I grow besides the figs. And I do want to mention that the fig, the fig is my absolute favorite fruit. Um, Without a doubt, out of all the tempered fruits that I have tasted, of the best quality figs, of the best varieties, um, it is a 10 out of 10 in terms of flavor, in terms of what a fruit can represent. Um, it stands above all else to me, personally. I mean, you can have obviously different opinions and I want you guys to have different opinions. I want you guys to try all this different stuff what's going to work for me is not always going to work for you and what's going to work for you is not always going to, not always going to work for me so you know certainly figs are of much higher quality and much more consistent quality in a drier warmer climate that's more subtropical but even here i've been able to ripen some really incredible tasting figs so that's why they're not on this list because i just put them above everything else and that's kind of the basis in which i judge everything against now, my second favorite fruit has become the persimmon. I've had quite a few store-bought persimmons. I've had persimmons in other countries. I've had uh, dried persimmons. I've had frozen persimmons. Um, none of them really come close to what you can grow at home. And to me, they're very easily 9 out of 10s. They're very close to what a fig can do, but on a more consistent level. Um, so they're a very consistent 9 out of 10. Some of them will really just blow you away. Uh, some will taste like marshmallows. Some will taste like, um, you know, dates. Others are cinnamon, spiced, pear, you know, gooey goodness. It's just, it's a really interesting fruit, and I really recommend that one. Um, however, out of all the other fruits I've had, those two seem to be above the rest until of course i had an apricot and this one this fruit really shocked me because i've had apricots at the store i've uh you know of course i've tried all these fruits for the most part i'd like to try them unless you cannot find them anywhere i always like to try them at the store before I decide to grow it. At least try it from somebody's tree somewhere. Um, and it just seems like uh, the apricot is just one of those fruits, guys, that is picked 
way too early. And that's pretty much the case across the board with just about everything you get at the grocery store is that in some way it is picked early and as a result the fruit quality just doesn't match up you know um, every day on that this particular whatever it is it can hang on the tree hang on the vine hang on the plant really increases those sugars and of course increases the flavor uh, it's just it's just a fact so the apricot is one of them fruits that is picked just a bit early and I wasn't really sure. I guess I could do the research beforehand and know 100%. I think plums are of the same thing. Um, and I haven't had homegrown plums. I haven't had homegrown pluots, which are crosses between apricots and plums. Certainly the peach, which I also would consider a 9 out of 10. Very close to the level of a persimmon, if not on the same level. So is the apricot. But the peach is, again, very, very good. And it's picked just too early and then the reason why it's picked early is because it's hard it can ship well it's got the right color and then once it's got that color and then it ripens for you on your counter but if you can get these things to really soften up on the tree you're in for a treat and apricot probably plums and the peaches these stone fruits are out of this world they're very difficult to grow um, so it's, it's, you know, it's a nice little trade-off is that actually the fig and all the challenges that the fig presents, I think they're actually easier to deal with than the stone fruits. Um, and not only that, but I think the figs just taste better above everything though, is the persimmon in terms of just how easy it is to grow the production and the flavor they're, they're, they're pretty much a 10 out of 10 across the board so what stone fruit though doesn't really rise up for me it's the cherry and cherries are great I, I'm not gonna lie I love cherries at the store I like them off my tree I think they're a great fruit but they're not an apricot they are not a peach by no means I mean I don't know maybe I need to let them you know almost get super soft on the uh, on the bush because they're they'll turn a dark red you know that dark purple color like most Bing type cherries will you get at the store but I don't really let them soften up so maybe I should let them soften up and I'll know I'll have a better idea but certainly with the cherry you can get them at high quality from the store because as soon as it excuse me as soon as a cherry turns fully red it's ready to be shipped and it's also ready to be picked there's very little time for example the peach turns the right color it gets the right size and then you can pick it whereas you could actually wait after it gets the right size and color maybe even two weeks before you actually pick it off your own tree and that two weeks is just a huge big it's a big deal whereas at the cherry there is no two weeks it's maybe one or four days after it turns perfectly red so that's kind of what I'm getting at here is that um, you can get these cherries at a high quality at the store and for me there's just no reason because of that there's not really much of a reason to grow them at home they they really are challenging the trees are not very long-lived the birds get almost all of them they're difficult to net um, now what is easier to grow and what is easier to to net is the bush cherry and we did a video on that recently some of you guys saw that video and told me that the cherry was not picked perfectly ripe and when it is perfectly ripe I would enjoy it a lot more well I disagree I think it was pretty damn close to perfectly ripe um, some of them I tried on the video perhaps were not but I've had some off of the bush that were probably even a bit more ripe than the cherries that I shown on the that I show I showed on the video so I knew already going into that video that they really just were not up to up to snuff now I could still be wrong you know I'm not going to completely ditch them but in terms of cherries guys they're they're just not up to the level 
they're not unique enough. They don't present something to me that is worth all that extra effort. If they were extremely easy to grow, like the bush cherry is, but again, it's sort of lacking in flavor. The bush cherry to me, let's see, where did I put the bush cherry? The bush cherry is a four out of 10 for me. Um, and anything below a five or five or below is what I would consider something you don't really want to eat fresh, something that needs to be processed. Um, something that certainly can have its, its, uh, its shine. It could, sh it could definitely do well for you in some other scenario in the kitchen, but eating this fresh is just not going to be something you want to do. Um, now, of course, people are telling me that that's just incorrect. So maybe, you know, maybe I should wait. But to be honest with you, I think these bush cherries will never really surpass my top tier fruits. Um, and they, and inevitably, they're just not really worth the effort. I think I'd rather grow other fruits that we're going to mention here in just a moment. So. That's just for me where I stand with the cherries is that they're just not good enough, not easy to grow enough to really warrant all the extra effort. I'd rather have an apricot. Uh, I'd rather have a another peach tree, you know. Um, so kind of disappointing, but it is what it is. And uh, I just thought a lot of you guys would really appreciate knowing that. Things like apples and pears these are also really staple fruits here in my part of the country i don't i haven't really tasted too many apples that blew me away i've had some off of orchards in the area none off of my own trees but i have had some in the in the area that were really tasty definitely better than the store definitely something to worth worth growing but None of them have really blown me away. In fact, no apple has ever really blown me away like an apricot has or a peach or a fig or a persimmon. I, I don't bite into this apple and say, oh, my God, that is so good that I need to start growing them. You know, that's the moment I think that a lot of you guys out there that are listening, you're going to have at some point in your lives or maybe you've already had it. You're going to have that epiphany moment and say, oh, my goodness, that is so good. And then it's so good that you then feel the urge to go out there and have that experience again. And the only way you're going to do that is, of course, by growing it. So the pear, though, I have a feeling could be a very high up there fruit. I would say the apples maybe could be an 8 out of 10. The cherries, by the way, for me are only the Bing type, the sweet type cherries. Those are only for me a 7 out of 10. As good as they are, I really like a 7 out of 10 is not bad at all, guys. A 6 out of 10 is not bad. Um, a 5 out of 10 is not bad either. I don't want to make this uh, seem like that's just a, a low rating. But we'll get into that as we go further. But the, the pears, I think, are probably going to be up there. Either an, an 8 or a 9. Because I've had a pear called the the Commas pear that was, that was grown very carefully by a company... Um, that really puts in a lot of effort and care into growing their pears and I got to taste one and it blew me away. Um, it absolutely blew me away. It tasted like a pear marshmallow, had the perfect texture, so sweet, so good that, uh, because not all pears by the way are for fresh eating. They're not all dessert pears. So it's very rare usually to find a pear that's such high quality um, but certainly I agree that pears can really be up there. And I'm sure apples can really be up there too with the right variety um, in the right climate. I don't doubt it, but I have never gotten that wow factor from an apple. I've only gotten it from a pear, apricots, persimmons, peaches, figs, and some others that we're going to list here in a moment. Um, now I want to go over some seven, seven out of ten, because seven – was what we rated the cherries at. And that's my homegrown and the store-bought cherries. I think the store-bought cherries are just as good. Um, the raspberries and the, and, the, and the blackberries are something that I personally love at the store and I also love to grow them at home. 
but growing them at home has got an extra little notch. But for me, the both of them are right around a seven. The raspberry specifically, I rated at a seven because I just get so many of them that I kind of get sick of them. And they never really blown me away. I love them. They're great. They're nice, refreshing fruit. It's got good flavor. It's got a nice little balance. But by no means have I bitten to a raspberry and said, whoa, hold on a second. So for me, they're on the same level, I would say, as a store-bought cherry. And, for, and I'm, I'm mentioning the store-bought quality, the store-bought ratings, so that you guys can compare for yourselves. Um, because I'm sure a lot of you have not grown every single thing that I'm, I'm talking about here. Something else that is a 7 out of 10 that also is very comparable to the store-bought quality is blueberries. So blueberries, just like the cherry, it turns blue and it's ready to be picked. It's ready to be shipped. So that's really important for something that's commercial, right? But also that's great for making them have such a high flavor is that they don't really have to be on the plant very long to get this incredible blueberry flavor. They've already got it. Um, so for me, it's not it's almost not worth growing blueberries either because they are a bit difficult to grow. Um, I haven't had any issues here in my climate. In fact, I think my <laughs> backyard is perfect for blueberries. I had no idea. But I did a soil test, a pH test. Um, not a soil test, a pH test. And I realized, oh my God, my soil is so acidic. It also is really heavy and holds lots of water. And of course it rains a lot here. So blueberries are almost perfect to grow in this, in my particular yard. Um, so I think they're easy to grow. I think that they um, have all these nice characteristics, but the, the, the store is just very comparable. And why put all my effort into this when I can just go to the store and buy it? I feel like that's kind of defeating the purpose is that the store needs to become obsolete. You know, the store has to be something that I only go to for the necessities, things that I can't really get. Um, or I'm sorry, not things that I can't get, but things that I, I can very easily get. You know, that, that kind of deterred me for a long time from, from growing things like onions and potatoes and garlic because it, it is just very accessible at the store. All these root crops like carrots, you know, but everything you grow, in terms of fruit anyway, is so comparable to the store or is not comparable to the store unless it's a blueberry or a cherry. Those are the two fruits that I would say are, are very comparable and are also at a very high quality when you get them from the store. So for me, that's a nice little bar that you guys can use is that a store-bought blueberry and a store-bought cherry are for me about a seven out of 10. And now the raspberry is exactly the same rating, I think. Even when growing it at home, I think growing it at home is certainly a notch higher without a doubt. The blackberry I think is even better than the raspberries, better than the blueberries. At the store, they're not that great. And growing them at home is easily a couple notches higher. So they get some real nice bonus points for the effort um, and also the reward that you get at the end. I think they're certainly worth growing over a lot of these different fruits is the blackberry. And for me, that one's an 8 out of 10. I think it's better, like I said, than the raspberry. I have had something called a pawpaw, and this is something I want to mention here to you guys. The pawpaw is a banana custard vanilla cream fruit. I mean, it is the largest fruit to, to North America, native to North America. It's basically the, the northern banana is what I like to call it. I'm sure somebody else has called that in the past, but for me, it's very close to a mango, maybe even close to a banana. It's very close to a banana. Sometimes they can be a bit bitter, and if they are bitter, to me, they're not that great. But there are varieties out there that are not bitter at all. And these are the varieties you want. Um, and if you had a mango, if you had a pawpaw like that, I think they're very easily an eight out of ten, approaching nine, maybe even close to tens. If I uh, if I can get one that's maybe perfectly ripe. So uh, that's certainly a fruit that a lot of you guys don't know about. 
for the most part, or maybe you've just heard of them. And I think it's certainly worth growing. You can grow them almost anywhere in the United States. Now, the the che, this is something I have yet to taste. And the che is a really strange fruit related to the fig, the mulberry. It's supposed to taste like a sweet watermelon combined with the... Uh, um, I forget what else people have said. It, it, But it's overall, most people do not like it. So I'm expecting this one to be quite low, probably even lower than a seven, you know, somewhere around a five or a six. But a five is something you don't want to eat fresh. So it's got to be a six, I would imagine. Uh, we'll obviously, you know, I may never even get to, cha to taste that fruit, to be honest with you. Um, and there's also a lot of fruits on this list that I'm going to go over that or fruits that are not on this list that exist that I have yet to even grow or even think about growing. Uh, there's only so much things you can grow, you know, um, so much time you can kind of dedicate in your mind to certain things. But I'm sure there's something out there that I haven't heard of that is certainly worth growing and could earn a position somewhere in this order of fruits here. Now, the strawberry to me is a solid 8 out of 10 and this particular variety called the Mara de Bois is a 9 out of 10. It competes with apricots when perfectly ripe. It competes with the peaches. That's an exceptional fruit. The same thing with the alpine strawberries. The alpine strawberries are very soft, melt in your mouth. The most incredible flavor of any fruit that I grow. Um, it's probably, some of them are even better than a lot of the figs that I grow. Um, they just have the most intricate, complex flavor that really will blow you away. It's such a small strawberry. For those of you who don't know what an alpine is, look it up. They are really, really good. Now, the mulberry here is next on my list, and this one I would say is an 8 out of 10. It's somewhere, I think, better than a blackberry, and the blackberry is rated an 8 out of 10. So for me... It's hard to give the mulberry a 9 out of 10, and I don't think I can. But I certainly would say it's really high up there um, and is better than the blackberry. So if I guess if you could say I'm doing this in halves, you know, like an 8 out of 10 um, or an 8.5, if we can go up a half step, that's pretty much where I'd put the mulberry. Um, now something else here that we grow is grapes table grapes. These are the European grapes that people love. You get them at the store. I would say the, the store-bought grape is probably a, a six or a seven. Depends on the variety, depends on the grower, depends on you know a lot of things, but most of the time they're not that great. If you can grow them yourself, you can let them hang on the, uh, the vine a lot longer and they're going to be easily an eight out of ten not only that, but they make the best raisins. Out of any any um, raisin you've ever had, growing your own grapes and then drying those grapes into raisins really is something. Um, and then when you dry them, you're actually going to notice that there's actually some nectar that the grape has been producing that, in my opinion, looks like honey. Um, so if you really let them ripen long enough and then dry them, you're going to physically see that with your eyes. It just it blew me away when I saw that. Um, so for me, they, they're, they're pushing nines, but for me, I have to put them at an eight for right now. Um, and they say that the muscadine grape is even better, which is the southern grape, which has a more interesting flavor than your typical table, sweet table grape. Uh, we skip something here. It's called the mulberry or the goji, the goji berry. And believe it or not, yeah, you can grow goji berries in a lot of places in the United States, almost anywhere. I think you can grow them even down to zone five, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe zone six is the limit. But you can grow them in the desert. You can grow them in more humid climates. Uh, you can grow them in more in the shade. They just don't mind most conditions and. Uh, for the most part, goji berries are not really something you want to eat fresh. Uh, and all these health properties that people rave about with them, you know, who knows if it's true, but it, let me just give you 
a goji berry and you can eat that and then we'll see how much you really believe in the or how much you really want to get these health benefits you know i think i i remember funny story when i first had a couple of my first goji berries i had one species that was horrible there's two species that you can grow one is slightly better than the other one it makes it honestly edible if you don't have the right species they're not they're almost not edible um you would want to spit them out in fact i did see a bird one time spit it out uh now i gave my brother some and my brother thought i poisoned him because i knew how bad it was and i was smirking i was smiling at him as he was eating it and then he looked at me like he thought i poisoned him (laughs) So the goji berry is not something you really want to eat fresh. The only way that I can really salvage them here is by drying them and adding lots of sugar. Uh, And that's kind of what they do at these health food stores is that they dry them and add the sugar to them. For me, they're only a 3 out of 10. And again, anything a 5 or below is not something you want to eat fresh. And I'm sure there's even something worse than the than the goji berry. Maybe I think the goji berry is a two, actually. I think we're going to make that a two because it, it could be a one. It's very close to a one uh, being the worst fruit ever, but I don't think it is actually. And I'm actually changing something down here because I've had some recently some black currants and there's different types of currants. There's red currants, there's black currants. If you let your black currants really ripen up, turn fully black and soften a little bit, They've got a pretty decent flavor. They really do. Um, I don't mind them at all. In fact, that you could even say that they're a six. In fact, better than the red currants. And the red currants are not bad either, but um, they're not most of the time what people want to eat fresh. And neither are the black. So for me, it's like you're kind of pushing it there, but I don't mind them. I like the tartness. I like the weird flavors. Even when they're underripe, they're a bit astringent. I like that. Um, And they're very easy to eat. They're very easy to grow, very easy to net. They're no-brainers. But the key is with a lot of these fruits, like the goji berry, the cherries, the blueberries, even the raspberries, is that you can process them just very easily. And that's kind of what the currants, in in this case, are meant for. Um, They make the best jam. They make liqueurs. They make wine. And it's the same thing with the honeyberry. You know, the honeyberry is supposed to be, in most varieties, that's what it's meant for, is to make these interesting processed foods. It's only recently that they've been breeding varieties that are meant to be eaten fresh. So, um, yeah, I think that's a big misconception with them. And certainly, I do like the honeyberries, even eating them fresh, but they're not very sweet. They have a very interesting, complex flavor that rivals the complexity, I think, of a black currant. So I think they're going to make incredible jam. They're going to be processed in such spectacular spectacular ways. But it'd be nice to see them on the shelf of a store, kind of like you'd see a blueberry. Um, At some point here, I think that is going to happen. So I really do like the the honeyberry. Um, And I like a lot of these bushes like the gooseberry, the jostaberry, the gumi. I think they're easy to grow, easy to protect, and they put out a lot of fruit. The gooseberry is actually ripening right now, and it's in the same family. It's it's a ribes. It's in the same family as the currants. And uh, very, very different fruit. It's almost like a grape. It's like a crisp grape that um, has got a, a more interesting flavor, I think. But it's not quite as good. It's not quite as sweet. It doesn't li- It doesn't have that high there's just something about a table grape maybe it's the varieties maybe they've been bred longer and you know crossed longer I I don't know but the point is the gooseberry just doesn't it doesn't have it but it is a 7 out of 10 I would say it's very close to something like a store bought cherry something like a store bought blueberry I love them I think they're great um now the Jostaberry, I haven't tried yet either, but this is 
a cross between the current and the gooseberry, which is going to have that complexity from the current, but the easeability of eating it fresh of a gooseberry. So this could really take the gooseberries to a whole other level and make them something spectacular. So I'm really hopeful and have been expecting that these Jostaberries are going to be something to watch out for. So for me, out of all the things that we've kind of talked about, I'm going to be growing anything that's like an 8 out of 10 or higher the most. We're really going to pay attention to that. Um, maybe a 7 as well if you can't get them at the store um, or if they fill a nice little gap. So a good example of that is the Gumi Berry. And I actually, believe it or not, I'm actually going to put the Gumi up a notch to an 8 because what I've learned very recently is that if you dry the Gumi Berries, you can actually dry them on the tree. They don't mind that at all. They dry very easily and they will literally taste like a gummy bear. It's nature's gummy bear. And I swear, I guess it makes sense now. I think I remember somebody saying they're called Gumi because they taste like gummy bears. But they do. They absolutely do. Um, it's kind of a shock. It really is. So for me, they're an 8 out of 10, especially if you can dry them or let them hang on the, tr on the plant, the bush, long enough. Or if you eat them fresh, you know, not in their dried state, even picked underripe, they're actually pretty good I think they taste like fruit punch with some astringency in there some tartness they're um, they're pretty good uh, very worthwhile growing fruit again it's like very early uh, very easy to grow easy to net it fixes nitrogen so for me I'm gonna grow more of these gumi berries I'm gonna be growing more of the honey berries once I find out a the, per, the specific variety of honeyberry, that's what we are going to focus on in particular. Um, also, the jostaberries, the currants, and the gooseberries, somewhere in there is going to be a winner. And um, we're going to grow quite a few of those. Certainly, the European grapes and the muscadine grapes. Uh, we're getting rid of, I think, most of our goji berries. We're certainly trying to grow more different types of mulberries. And one thing I forgot to mention is the Morris Nigra mulberry that we're growing in a pot. This one is very difficult to grow actually in a large part of the US, but this one's supposed to have the best uh, mulberries. They're supposed to be the king. Uh, without a doubt, it's supposed to be one of the best tasting. And for me, I'm growing it specifically in a pot because I, I can. It's the only way I can just to be able to taste them. We're also propagating a lot of the alpines. We just planted probably somewhere around 20 or so seedling alpines, maybe 15. We started a whole bunch of seeds from different varieties here. So maybe I should add this to the list. Uh, they're not unknowns anymore. There's two of them that I specifically tried to get. I'm, I'm uh, blanking on the names right now. I think we talked about them on an episode of Fruit Talk, believe it or not. But uh, we did propagate them. It took us a while, man. These are difficult plants to grow from seed. Uh, but we did get them in the ground, and they seem to be doing all right. So uh, this is something I really like, especially because I love strawberries. But the, the alpines, again, they're they're on another level, guys. They're a small fruit, but there's, <laughs> there's not really much that compares with that flavor. And it's such a nice snack to go outside, even if small fruit, just pick it off the plant, pop it in your mouth, and it's like an explosion of flavor. So we talked about the, the, the bush cherry here. What we forgot to mention is the kiwi. You can grow kiwi in very cold climates. There's arctic kiwi, and there's also hardy kiwi, which are both, I think, fuzzless. I'm not sure if the arctic kiwi is, but uh, the hardy kiwi, actinidia arguta, is fuzzless. They call them kiwi berries. They're grown actually commercially in Pennsylvania, believe it or not, and they're really special fruits. And for me, I've had them off of a friend's plant, a friend's vine. I've had them off of uh, from the store. They are really, really good. I've had them at farmers markets as well. Um, I really love these berries. So for me, they're actually a nine out of ten. Haven't had them off my own tree, my own vine just yet, but it is what it is. 
the pomegranate we're getting down now to the subtropical fruits these are difficult to grow fruits that you may not be able to in most of the u.s the pomegranate here growing them in containers um you know it's been a challenge but certainly they're all flat for the most of them are all flowering now they're they're not setting fruit as much as i'd like to see it seems to be a bit difficult for them to set the pollination that i'm i'm doing doesn't seem to be really be working uh, we may have to take different measures because they're just not getting their act together but certainly the pomegranate at the store is one of my favorite fruits without a doubt it's really really something with that acidity the sweetness the sharpness on your tongue it's kind of like uh drinking some wine if you ask me it really leaves a nice lingering effect on your palate you have to work for the fruit and i think working for it really adds to the effect the experience it's kind of like drinking a shot of tequila is that you got the you got the lime and you got the salt you know it's a nice little thing that you have to go through you know it's there's different parts you know i feel like the same thing with the pomegranate um also i love the crunch there's not many fruits that exist with uh, such a crunch like that now the persimmon we've talked about easily a nine out of ten but the the nine out of tens for me are the astringent types the non-astringents i think are somewhere around an eight out of ten and i've actually had some non-astringents though that were really really good these were in israel and they had the brown interior i'm, I'm assuming because they were pollinated because they were really ripe uh, picked at the right time so i'm not entirely sure if i'm going to be able to get that quality here or even get that pollination because that's a whole nother thing but so far the astringents are are far superior especially when growing at home you know, a, a high chia from the store just doesn't compare to a persimmon that you can grow at home. It is a bit of a shame. Um, I've had some good high chias from the store, from the Asian market, but it's just not right. The jujube is a, a fruit, oh, by the way, that for me is only a 6 out of 10. This is just above what you would consider something you wouldn't eat fresh. And you can certainly eat them fresh, no problem, no issues. But I don't think they're really all that great. Um, they taste like apples when they turn red. And then once they turn red, they start to shrivel up and dry on the tree, believe it or not. And then those apparently get a really great flavor to them. But for me, I haven't had them. I Maybe not perfect. Um, but I have had them and enjoyed them. I certainly enjoy them. I certainly like them. But... Uh, you know, it's not that wow factor that I'm looking for here, guys. And they they don't really seem to be better than something that is complex like a cherry or a blueberry. So for me, I'm only putting them at a 6 out of 10. Again, maybe all this can change. You know, maybe this is all going to be different for where you guys live, for what you grow, for your taste preferences. But for me, this is kind of what I wanted to mention is like these are the ratings that I'm giving and then this is what I'm going to be planting more of. So, you know, certainly the persimmon, we're going to plant more of. The gumi, the kiwi, I don't have room for more of them. Otherwise, I would. Um, in fact, I'm not even sure how many of them you're probably going to need because they really bear heavily. Um, more of the honeyberries, certainly something in the currants, the gooseberries, and the josta berries. All the grapes, the the mulberry i love the alpine the alpine strawberry the strawberry itself um the blackberry there's a blackberry we forgot to mention called the marion berry which is supposed to have a more complex elegant flavor this is the one that i'm really looking for that we can potentially propagate more of the pawpaw as well pears apricots peaches and so far that's it those are the fruits that I'm really uh, obsessed with. And, of course, the fig. So, anyway, guys, I want to thank you all for watching this one. I, the best time to plant a fruit tree is, what was it, 10 years ago? Is that the, uh, the saying? Um, so, go out there and, and plant some of this stuff. I really do wish that I had planted more of specific things than I did. 
So we're going to see if we can change things around next year. Get some different things in the ground that, um, or maybe graft over certain things that are just more beneficial to what I'm looking for. But, you know, this again, this is all a test orchard for the most part. This is all a test. So it's a nice little learning experience. We can then take this knowledge and use it in a good way in the future. So just sharing that with you guys. I hope everyone enjoyed this episode of Fruit Talk. We'll all catch you next week for next week's episode. All right. Take care, everyone.